Uh, even though the month is almost over, I want to wish everybody a very happy Pride Month. It's been a great month for the LGBT community, especially here in New York State, where I'm from. Um, if you haven't heard the news, if you've been under a rock, New York State uh, just passed the um, Same-Sex Marriage Equality Act uh, the other night, so there's much celebrating in New York State. I wish it had been last uh, Friday night because our Pride celebration here in Syracuse, New York, was last Saturday, so that would have been amazing, but that's okay. No complaints. Um, congratulations to all my friends who have been partnered for a very long time and uh, can now solidify the relationship if they so choose uh, legally, which is great. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of marriage per se, but I do feel that all people should have the right to be married regardless of, you know, age, sex, gender, creed, race, whatever. Uh, and of course, sexual orientation. So, uh, bravo New York, it's about time, long overdue. Um, I have ideas for a lot of videos I'd like to make, but this video I just wanted to talk a little bit about something that's been on my mind the past few months that I've been dealing with, um, and frankly even struggling with a bit, um, and it's the, it's the age old issue of uh, you know fitting in um, and feeling like you don't. <laughs> and it's funny, it's not something that you think you have to deal with at the age of 37. Um, I turned 37 in February of this year. And I've been out a long time. I came out sophomore year of college, during college. Um, knew I was gay probably sophomore year of high school as far as like putting the pieces together. But I've known since I was like five years old that I was different from other girls. And, uh, but you know, when you're a teenager, you're kind of one plus one is three, okay, two, no. So that's when I figured it out, but didn't officially come out until I was about 20 years old. So I've been out you know, almost 20 years, and to everybody, I was out to certain people before that. I've been attending the Pride Celebration since my sophomore year of, high, of college, rather. So, um, you know, I've been out and about for a very long time. Um, very comfortable being out to friends and family. Um, but then there are situations like yesterday when I uh, got to go to lunch with my former confirmation teacher. I was raised Roman Catholic. And I had not seen her in years, um, probably since then, since around that time. And uh, we have since had business dealings through my, my place of work, but just over the phone. And she wanted to treat me to lunch. And I found myself yesterday getting ready and freaking out, <laughs> basically because um, of the way I look. You know, it's not like I'm a blunder. Um, some of my friends, you wouldn't necessarily know that they're gay unless they told you, and which is fine. That they have to look a certain way if you're gay. I don't, I don't mean it that way. I'm just saying, you know, it is what it is. You know, I am not a traditional appearing woman, um, which is fine with me. But at the same token, it's something I've been struggling with lately. So then to have it surface in this way, I was nervous getting ready and thought, well... I'm just going to go by the don't ask, don't tell policy, which, you know, I know they repealed it, but sometimes it's a good policy. It's all about your comfort level. And um, this person's very religious, and so, of course, you know, I was concerned. And I kind of skirted a couple questions yesterday, nothing major, but it didn't come up, and we had a great time, and I'm so glad that we got to see each other, and we're actually going to have lunch again um, maybe later next month. So at some point it will come up. Um, because I don't believe in hiding, but it also didn't want to like just throw everything out in the first meeting after probably not seeing her in you know nearly 20 years. Um, but it's hard. It's hard, and it's I guess it's something that as a um, a queer person, and I'm just going to use queer as the umbrella term, so that I include everyone. Uh, um, you deal with lifelong when you get a new job. Uh, you date someone new and you have to meet their family or make new friends, new coworkers, what have you. I mean, you deal with it your whole life. And uh, it is something that I do struggle with um, from time to time. Not usually, but also lately, you know, as you get older, your feelings about things change or you meet new people that influence the way that you think or make you question things about yourself. And lately I've been feeling like the, uh, you know, odd man out, so to speak, 
and um, maybe that's just with who I'm surrounding myself with, and, and that is no negative comment on them whatsoever. But, you know, when you look around and you don't see a lot of people that look like you, um, you know, usually I'm really good at kind of tuning that out, and I am who I am, and, you know, I've been this way a long time, and I'm well accepted and well loved, and I have wonderful friends and a supportive family for the most part, especially my sister. Um, my mom was a huge supporter. Unfortunately, she's no longer with us, but uh, so I, I cannot complain on that measure. But, um, you know, sometimes it wears on you, and you get tired of not fitting in. Not that I want to fit in, but let's face it, it's a lot easier when you belong than when you don't belong. And then there's the whole, um, you know, FTM question, and I get a lot of comments on my videos. Are you a man or a woman? Are you a boy or a girl? What are you? You know, first of all, I guess if you're not paying attention to the video and not listening to what I'm saying, I guess that's a question, but frankly, it's pretty clear what I am as far as the name of my channel, just Julie, and then if you listen to my videos... I always discuss something about this issue, usually if you're watching one of my vlogs, not the crazy videos I make, but, um, so I'm always kind of mad and offended or, and also hurt by some of those comments, and I don't know why. Um, sometimes I'm like, whatever, and then other times it bothers me. I guess that's life. Uh, but really, um, I deal with it all the time. I mean, I ride, the, I take, I use public transportation to get to and from work and, and other places, so I, every day I get looks. Um, all the time I get called sir. And that doesn't really bother me either. Um, I am a gender bender. I consider myself a gender queer lesbian. I mean, I'm definitely not a traditional woman. I don't want to be a man, but I don't feel like I fit fully into the female box either. So, like, whenever I fill out a form at a new doctor's office or any kind of form where you have to check off male or female, I kind of look at them and I'm like, eh, I don't know. I wish there was, I hate the word other, but I don't know, I wish there was something like, you know, just me, you know, so that's why my channel, um, I wanted to, I wish I could change the whole name, but right now under, under the Julie Moon it says just Julie, you know, just say my name, just call me by my name, I'm Julie, that's me, whatever that means, so right now I'm working to, uh, which I never thought I would be doing, but kind of reworking to accept that about myself and embrace the things about myself that do make me different. Um, and, and constantly battle against the, um, you know, societal norms that are constantly thrust upon us. So maybe some of you out there watching struggle with this too, of any age, young, old, um, man, woman, however you identify, and it doesn't even have to be a queer issue. I mean, we all have times where we feel we don't fit in. And I think it's at those times it's most important to remind ourselves that, um, you know, we are worthy as human beings. We are loved um, as children of, you know, the universe, of this planet. Um, you know, we all have people in our lives who love us, whether they are blood-related or not. A lot of us have to make our own families if our biological families have rejected us. So it's at those times we should surround ourselves with friends and family uh, who do accept us exactly as we are because this world can be a very trying place to live in. If you are someone who does not fit into the, you know, traditional boxes, you know, A or B, you know, and it starts from birth, you know, pink for girls, blue for boys, and uh, I applaud the Canadian couple that is um, seeking to, to raise their child genderless, at least for now. I understand where they're going with that. I don't think it can last so long because, I mean, you do have to let the child know if it's a boy or a girl. It's only fair to them in forming their own identity. I think... Their goal is so that other people don't treat the child differently or in a certain way based on knowing whether it has a penis or a vagina. And that's the way it should be. We're all human beings. We all have passions, interests. Um, it shouldn't matter if a boy wants to play with a kitchenette set or a girl wants to play with a little craftsman tool set. Who cares? Uh, let's just learn to accept each other's differences, celebrate one another, love one another, and try to... Um, spread peace uh, among ourselves so that maybe, just maybe, we can heal uh, ourselves and start to help heal this planet which is suffering. And that's a topic I'll discuss in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching. Uh, peace to everyone. And please leave comments or any suggestions for future videos. And glad to be back. Peace and happy Pride Month.